Welcome, 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 welcome uh, on now the podcast. I know you guys are super excited to see us. First of all, we want to send a special shout out to you guys for supporting. We are up to 400 plus subscribers. We are hearing from people we haven't heard from in a long time. Uh, my long last cousin. Um, I was like, oh, I can't. I don't have any money for you. We're not on Barstool Sports <laughs> yet. We have no money for you. But that being said, I am your host slash moderator, Don, not to be confused with Don King. My hair is a lot more lavish. Shout out to Renee. It's still and I'm going to keep the show exciting. Guys, introduce yourself before we dive in. Yes, yeah, me, baby, Nick Taylor, coming in on the one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tens. Doing it at one time, doing it again. Hey, I'm a poet and I don't even know it. Um, but I ain't, I, I ain't want to be a football slash rapper. So I just, you know, did the football thing for, you know, in the Canada for a little bit. Three time champion CFL. Uh, former NFL, Minnesota Vikings, uh, Division One basketball player, um, and I was rated the fastest player, fastest person in the world in 2013. Maybe not. Okay, but I'm here. We we're talking sports again. Thank y'all once again. Like Donald said earlier, thank y'all for all the support. It's been fun. Last week was crazy. Y'all went off on Rudy rant for. 900,000 views, so appreciate y'all. All right, guys, let's just get to all things. Uh, well, we can say women's basketball. I want to start off by saying um, special shout out to Don Staley. Unfortunately, a lot of the new cycles have not been giving her enough credit in the team. I mean, rightfully so, I think, but there should be a little bit of a mix. So I want to start the, the second off by saying, Don Staley, you're amazing. We see you and your team. Was just otherworldly this season. Right. Or are we talking about the whole thing, just Caitlin Clark, or you know, whatever you right. want? Okay, no. Nah, uh, this past weekend was amazing for women's sport. Indeed, um, it was probably the highest rated weekend of women's sports ever. Um, everybody tuned in on Saturday. Was it Sunday? What day it was? Friday. No, but they're talking about the championship, though. Yeah, it was Sunday afternoon at 3.30. They got all of us out of our beds um, from brunch. Brunch. Hey, hey, some people are still in bed on Sundays at 3 o'clock. That's the day you're supposed to be doing a damn thing. Uh, some people are at brunch. You're on your fifth mimosa. And people left their fifth mimosas, and they wanted to go see Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark was the spark for the whole NCAA tournament. Everybody tuned in for her. She made everything go. She deserves everything that should come into her, all the props, everything indeed. But like we are going to say, we are going to give props to South Carolina for handling business. They were the more athletic team. They, I won't say they wanted it more. You could say they wanted it more by the offensive rebounds, but they were just more athletic. It's nothing that, it's nothing that Iowa could do about it. They, it's, they still missed a lot of layups in that game, man. It's just... It's baffling to see. It's baffling to watch. It's hard on the eyes sometimes, but... um. All in all, still, it gave us the excitement that the men's side just didn't give us, at least for the championship game. It was a little bit of a bore for the championship on the men's side, but the women's side, we were all tuned in. Caitlin Clark did her best, but she did go 10 for 28. Um, South Carolina came back with revenge on their minds. Um, Raven Johnson, she played an amazing game defensively after they put her on Caitlin Clark more like the second half, second quarter-ish. Um, everybody's saying that she had a revenge from last year for 
for them not in her shoot, but she still was awful for shooting. She was one for 10. That wasn't the impact that she made. She made the impact on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and everybody's going to talk about Cardosa. She had a monster game. Um, I'm still not on the hype train for it. Um, she doesn't have any post moves for me personally. I, I didn't enjoy her game. Like, I thought she had a little bit more of getting into her own shot, but most of her points was just because she was just playing old bigger than them and they were, couldn't do anything about it. Rudy wanted them to front her the whole game. I say, well, they can, they can't really, they try to, but that just mess up their whole defense because they can't really pressure the ball like that because they're sitting in the zone. They're trying to make South Carolina shoot the ball and South Carolina shot the hell, hell out the ball. Pow, pow, Tessa, um, they came out and they were the difference makers. Oh, and Fu Wiley was the biggest difference maker. She changed the whole floor of the game. She pushed the pace. Um, and everybody got going from that point on when Fu Wiley came in the game because they were down. And um, it changed the whole momentum. Um, and another person, man, I think it was really um, Chloe Kitt. That's her name. She had like 11 points and 10 rebounds, man. She was actually making layups. She was finishing. She came out and hit a a mid-range jump shot to start the, the half, and it really got things going. And um, I thought she did better than Cardoso. She played in way less minutes and had 11 and 10. Now, if she played the same amount of minutes as Cardoso, she would have had 22 and 18 just going by the numbers. So I thought she was more important, and she didn't get the, the, the props that she deserved. Everybody talked about Cardoso and, and Raven Johnson and the defense that was put on Caitlin Clark, and – South Carolina did something that nobody else could really do besides West Virginia. They got into her. They forced her to do turnovers. They forced her to take bad shots. And that's something we really haven't seen from her. And like I said, it was just a great game all around. <laughs> I didn't want to go too much. I wanted you to go in and then we'll dive back and forth. Oh, 
from one through ten who would start at South at Iowa with Caitlin Clark. Because Gabby Marshall did nothing. Off off falter did nothing. Martin 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 was solid. She was okay. I think she had sixteen. She started off. She started off getting the ring. Terrible. No, she started off good that game. She hit like the first five points. Clark had eighteen in the first. No, no, but Martin started off like the first five. She didn't do anything for quite some period of time. Yeah, because Caitlin got hot. These women cannot. These women cannot create their own shot. Without Caitlin Clark, this is a twelve win team. Fifteen win team. They don't make the tournament. So this nonstop hate for a woman who's literally made people watch, it's weird. It's pathetic. It's sad. And it makes no sense because at the end of the day, it, you need this woman to be good in the WNBA for her star power to carry over. Because star power will only last so long if you can't play, right? If she sucks, then what do you have? You have nothing. They are. I, they have already announced Indiana Indiana Fever, who haven't even drafted her, <laughs> have already announced that all 36 games are on national TV. If that's not the WNBA trying to utilize Caitlin Clark to maximize exposure, I don't know what is. And that's clearly why they hate on her, because she's doing something that no one can do. But let's be real. Why do we watch her, Nick? We watch her because she's unbelievable. Because she's a female Steph Curry. She's a female Steph Curry, exactly. And you can't, you, you can't un like the shooting ability is just the shooting ability. She's incredible. Well, they they now, it's have to have something to draw our eyes to their game. That's something similar to a man. Would you want Camila that, Cardoso that, play basketball? That's, that's one, some, fuck no. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. We they have to have something in their game that's similar to a men's game, exactly. which is the top level for us to be in tune in it. And she's the only one that kind of has something that's similar of getting her shot off the way she does and from the distance that she does that makes us, you know, intrigued by what she can do. And that's what brought our eyes to it because it's not the athletic ability. It's not her going to the basket and finishing. She's not that great at that. Uh, it's, it's nothing that a lot of these women could do with finishing around the basket. Like I said, Cardoso. She's bigger than everybody, and she was getting her sh- and she was getting her shot blocked she by Stokey. Shot blocked by Stokey, six two, six two, and and that's what I'm. That's why it threw me off a little bit. I'm like, I thought she had a little bit more of finesse around and getting her shot off, but no. When you don't have the athletic ability and you're not really getting off the ground, it it it, it it's it's something that we're not gonna be liking to watch. So so when they hate on her, I I get the point of why they hate on her, do Rudy. Anybody that come in and threaten the league of being the best player, you're gonna it's gonna be hate because people are still playing. And you will like that because of the competitive nature of them saying that she's not gonna come in there and do that. But she will come in there and do that. We know that that's gonna happen. But I I I love the women saying that that's not gonna happen. This is a grown woman league. So whatever you thought was gonna happen, I like them having that competitive edge. Not a hate when it go a little bit past they won't that. Have that same attitude towards other players. Yeah, yeah, Rudy. They will have it against anybody who's coming in with that. Anybody, who, Rudy, as a competitor, as a competitor, as a competitor, anybody who comes in with that level of hype, you're gonna hate because you don't think that they could do it on the next level because you are pros and you've been doing that. This the highest level you've been doing it for a while. So LeBron, when you've been doing it on a college level, you're like, oh, that's just a college level. You have to prove it to us, Rudy. You have to I prove it to us. I averaged 17 her senior year of high school, college, like 17 or 19. She averaged her first year in college, and then in WNBA, 17, 18 points. She yeah. was the exact same player but you, her first year in the WNBA. Yeah, which makes the one talking shit more than anybody because she's 40 fucking years old. She needs to fucking retire. She couldn't guard Caitlin Clark to save her life right now. So she wants to talk shit about her and dismiss her and deflect the fact that, Diana, you're done. You yeah. can't guard any young girl right now. You can't. You're not the player you were. Retire. Get the fuck on. Your Man. game will, this league will not continue with you old ass hags who can't play anymore and can't move and can't advance your game. I mean, the hate. I mean, bro. Even this weekend, my rant will be about it. But it's like everybody, the 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 entire uh, panel for ESPN or ABC. It was like they were cheerleaders for, 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 for every team that played against Caitlin Clark, even though the only way they'd be on TV for anyone to see them is if Caitlin Clark advanced. They picked, the one girl, Drea Carter, my God, she picked fucking West Virginia against Iowa. Okay, what, what's wrong with that? And then she picked Colorado. But what's wrong? 
Because it has, has its hatred because there's a bullshit to it. No, what? Seriously. Because there's no logical reasoning that you would pick West Virginia or Colorado could, maybe, against Iowa. Maybe you think the same thing that you just said, that they're not that talented around, and it, maybe you could you could but, throw, but, throw, but, uh, but they've won 30 fucking one games without that talent. Uh, but, they won 31 games. And, they, and every it's, single time. They, they, escaped, they escaped West Virginia. It wasn't like they were They won like 10, bro, but they won the game. Bro, Rudy, they were double-digit favorites. But they were, but at the end of the game, on, Rudy, Rudy, it was close. Was it not? Again, and yet, and yet South Carolina beat Indiana by three. Yeah, of course. I get, and, I, and, and, oh, I, oh, I, South Carolina messed around. I get what you're they saying, won. but I don't I don't think it's hate if you pick another team that they're going to no, beat. I, no, it's, no you, you, did you really listen to these pregame press conferences? Like, like. Did, yeah, you, I, let me ask you. Did you turn it on when the game started? Did you watch, listen to the shit they were saying? Yeah, I listened to it. The shit they were saying was like, bro, you, you're, they were in the Final Four last year. They are the number two ranked team in the country, yeah. and you're picking a team ranked 30th, 25th, to beat them in the, in the, in the tournament? Really? And what did Caitlin Clark do against fucking Colorado? She lit their ass up. Mm-hmm. She lit their ass up. Now, West Virginia, she still had 32. Yeah, I mean. Her teammates didn't perform. They could be wrong. Caitlin Clark, bro, against uh, the most impressive situation to me for Iowa was against UConn. You know, where they were down, where she didn't, I mean, they defended her really well. They really did. well. Now, I think Caitlin Clark has many areas of her game that she needs to improve on. She can, she can handle the ball. She but can she doesn't handle the ball like with enough authority. There was two plays who, in the second quarter. Who does, that, who does that remind you of? Everything says Steph Curry. What's Steph Curry? Yeah. We're loosey goosey with the ball loosey because the they ball. Could, they could do all the dynamic things with it. They put it through their legs and they pat it real good. They could get anywhere on the court yeah. with it, but sometimes it's just lackadaisical she with the ball. Literally handed the ball to Raven Johnson twice. Yeah, and that changed the second quarter. Yep. Incredibly, they were leading by two. She turns it over once, then she turns it over again. There are times where she takes shots that are just like, "What are you doing?" But I, I get it. That's the only she chance to, that's, <laughs> that she has to score. That's the only. And, and it's their chance, and she has to drop buckets all day mm-hmm. long. I yeah. told you she'd have to drop forty. Remember? And she needs to have fifteen assists. She had eight assists, I think it was right. Yeah, like eight. Um, but you needed forty. And you didn't get, I mean, the first quarter, I thought she was at 50. Ooh, Lord have mercy. I mean, that first quarter was unbelievable. And, I, and a massive credit to South Carolina for not getting blown out of the building. But we know why they didn't get blown out. Because Iowa can't rebound. Mm-hmm. Let's, like, th- this new thing of, it's very simple. You've got a big-ass girl like Cardoso. She's going to rebound the ball. She's 6'7", and she's massive. I was surprised that Iowa did not use 44 or Grady with Stalky to have her guard Cardoso because I thought she did a good job on Cardoso and let Stalky guard one of those other six foot three girls who are not as big as Cardoso. Kit, because Kit. You need to rebound the ball. If you can't rebound the ball, you can't get on the run and you Rudy. can't push tempo because in that first quarter, what did, what did, what did she do? She was hitting them down the court. And mm. then obviously she had 18, but you see how they beat, you see how those other women score. They score off of, Caitlin Clark passing the ball mm-hmm. and winning the, the, the foot the race. race. That's fast. The white it, girls, the white Usain Bolt girls. The white Usain, they are fast. They are like fast. They I give it to the them. Floor. But defensively, they, they suck. They're def- uh, de- defensively, Martin can't guard, guard a park car. Because a they, don't, have, yeah, they, they don't have the athletic ability to do it. So that's why they have to sit oh, in the zone. And, and you were like, you were like. They're, like so they're so fast with no athletic ability. But um, they, they could go, they could straight line, straight line. Straight line to the rim. And that's probably more of a that's probably more conditioning than than them being really that fast. But it seems like that because they 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 stay at that one pace for the whole time. And even in the even in the fourth quarter, they got it down to seventy six seven, mm-hmm. and then I think they, they and then they turned the ball over. Then they got it down to five actually. Was it? It was seventy six seventy. I know that. And they turn they have the ball, and they turn the ball over, and right back it's like oh that's that was that was it. Like <laughs> that was, at yeah. that point, it was. Because you even saw like the dejection on their faces, like shit. We had a shot. Oh yeah, that was our shot. And because I think if they score now, you, you make it seventy six, seventy three. You put a little pressure on the team. They're, they're starting to think. They're starting to think about last year again. They're thinking about how they blew it last year. All those things, and you're sitting like, at that point, look. Credit to South Carolina. They played their asses off. Mm-hmm. Tessa Johnson was pow, incredible. Pow pow. The two of them. 
they hit all those threes. Johnson's a freshman. She had 19. It was it was full wide, and full wide and energy coming oh, that, in. That girl's a beast. That, but that's the thing. When they talk about how, oh, Staley has a new lineup. They're all yeah. McDonald's <laughs> All-Americans. You're replacing McDonald's All-Americans. McDonald's All-Americans. Like, and when they do it next year, it'll be more McDonald's All-Americans. Uh-huh. Iowa, right now, I don't know if you saw it. They're not in the top 25 so, next season. So so that's what I was going to bring up a, a, a point about. when There's they talk, no respect for them. So when so they talk about... You criticize Clark. So when they talk about Clark not being a GOAT because she didn't win a championship, I say, well, she's not playing with eight all, all, all McDonald All-Americans that everybody else played with. Tarasi played with. Brianna Stewart Steve, played with. Tarasi played with three national players of the year. Exactly. So, same so time. for her to starting lineup, bro. That's what that just shows the greatness of her. So if anybody don't see the greatness of what she did and how she makes a lot of people better than they are, because that team, like you said, is like <laughs> you, t- it's like taking the star player off of most teams and what they'll do, like the, the ring cult. The ring culture that permeates our society now has destroyed sports. Of course, of course, it destroyed sports. Of because- course. LeBron James is the, one of the greatest of all time. I don't give a shit if he's won four rings or ten rings. He's one of the greatest of all time. I don't care if he's lost six championships. He got there. Like, yes. It's ridiculous. You know, Charles Barkley didn't win a ring. He's one of the greatest power forwards of all time. I don't give a shit that he didn't win a ring. That the, you win a, you're a team. You're a team. Brianna Stewart played with multiple national players of the year. Mm-hmm. She got there every year because her team was stacked, front and back. Now, if UConn had not been injured... I think UConn would have won the national championship because you don't realize how many points are sitting on their bench injured. So, All Americans sitting on the bench who would otherwise be starters this year who are not starting, which creates a massive depth issue that you don't have. So the fact that UConn got there was nothing short of amazing. And I think Paige Bukers is incredible. She's so, phenomenal. I'm going to read this quote by this guy, this guy named Tashawn Reed. He got a blue check on Twitter. It, it popped up. So I guess he's kind of important somewhere. I don't know. Okay. There isn't a goat in sports who doesn't have at least have at least one championship. I read that shit. Bending yeah. the rules to try to include Caitlin Clark is disrespectful to several uh, several other great women college basketball players we've seen over the years. She's still the best scorer ever and at an all time great. Man, that's the dumbest shit I ever fucking heard. If you really watch the game and look and see the the value of her in the in the sport and what she did for one team without playing with all 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 Americans that everybody else had, I don't think they you taking a line of that like. Everybody who won had amazing teams. She almost pulled off something that was historical, man. It was like watching them women play. It was like the opposite of the uh, the Texas Southern team from back in the 1966 on the men's side. But instead of being an all-black team, it was like all-white team. And I and I was going to give them credit for it. I'm like, man, that's that's almost as impressive as them, man. Because to pull it off with that team, it just it would have been, uh, been amazing, man. So what he just said was dumb, especially for women's college basketball when it's a round robin of you just lose one game and you only get four years it's not like it's her career like when it's your career he wins and, four rings in the WNBA. then what then what then what are you gonna say that just looks fucking stupid that looks fucking stupid rudy so i don't get it when you come out and say some uh egregious statement like that like what are, what are you saying right now? now now that's hate rudy now ask that's yourself, hate ask yourself this one of the people that was on that panel as you you, you heard me voice my issues with having half of UConn's former roster co- covering on ESPN the UConn-Iowa mm-hmm. uh, game. I thought that was ridiculous. Like, they're literally cheerleading for you. It's absurd. Like, this, we have to have some level of objectivity. And then on the championship game, you bring Aaliyah Boston, who played at South Carolina last year, is cheerleading on the desk. Like, there's no objectivity. And then she's literally on the floor in their celebration to where ES- ABC comes back to the desk and Aaliyah Boston's cheerleading on the floor on the damn stage. Like, Rudy, wasn't she just there last year? Yes, she was. So okay. she's behind the bench. <laughs> Don't You can't call her to be a freaking objective uh, reporter. We, it, it just, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's more, but, I think it was more of her, but, the, star, the star power of her yes, rather than, because they the don't comedy. have enough of it to just get here, anybody here, here, to do here, it. Here's the comedy. She's going to be the biggest fan of Caitlin Clark. In of course. Of so course. Her teammates. Yes. And that team is going to be way better. Aaliyah Boston's going to average 20 a game because she's going to be getting layups from that beeline down the court. Long from the, from, 
I mean, look. Just I, run, the, I, run the court, big man. I got you. I've watched women's basketball. I've watched high school girls basketball since you were in high school uh-huh. and before that. And I remember watching some amazing high school girls basketball. But it's very similar to the, to, to college women's and college basketball. It's very top heavy. Yeah. You have great, great teams or really of good course. teams, and then the rest of them suck. Yeah. And that's why the, the tournament as a whole, there's no parity. So the first two rounds, it's 31 and one, 31 to one in wins to losses for higher seeds. So you had a couple of upsets, like a four beating a five, and then a two beating a three beating a two, but those aren't really upsets. Three beat 14 beating three yeah. in, in Oakland beating Kentucky, that's an upset. Yeah. You know, 11 beating six and, and what or whatever it was, six, yeah, and 12 beating five. But there are no upsets in women's basketball. You think UConn beating USC it, was an upset? No, it's gonna take it's, upset. it's gonna take a while before the parity of women's basketball even get like that. Because everybody wanna to go to one school or two schools or three schools. And they still do. Go and look it, at it right now. It's getting a little bit better now. Before it was just Yukon, Yukon, Yukon. Iowa does not have you, one girl in the top thirty nine. It used to just be Yukon and Tennessee. Yukon, Tennessee. Well, yeah, now it's Yukon Ten- now it's Yukon and South Carolina. Yukon has three of the top eighteen recruits in the country for next year. You, South Carolina has three of the top twenty six. Like they still are stacked. And I looked at when Diana Taurasi played. She played with a bunch of national players of the year. Yeah. Brianna Stewart played with national players of the year. These teams are loaded. Yeah, so, so that's why I don't want to hit it. That's why I don't want to hit a championship. The, the championship. championship? Yeah, I don't want to hear that in women's basketball. Ring culture pisses me off so damn much, and I get it. It's here. But we have to be objective in what we're watching. Yeah. What she does on that floor mm-hmm. is unbelievable. It's second and there's no woman who's ever done that. Not no. Maya Moore, not Cynthia Cooper, not Cheryl Miller. I don't care if they didn't have a three-point line 35, 45 years ago. I don't care. It doesn't mean you could have shot it. <laughs> Like, I've, what she does is her passing skills to me. I think at times she tries to force those pocket passes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, she turns the turnovers uh-huh. because that's about the only way she gets these girls involved. Because mm-hmm. they can't jump three inches off the ground to catch a pass. So she has to pocket pass it on bounce passes every single time or backdoor passes. And I, and so there, there are times I'm like, don't make that pass. Just take the shot. Because you could see it's really congested. So there are things that I have no problem criticizing her about because I do think there was a point in the game where she kind of lost herself, mm-hmm. got frustrated because Raven Johnson did a good job defending her. Yeah. She did. She did a good job. But this bullshit about the Caitlin stopper, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> she busted 41 on her ass last year. Let's not act like but she, she stopped her. She did. She slowed her down. Yeah, okay. And she still had 30. But all right, all right. That 30. In the first quarter. But all she right. ended up with 30 points. All right. And that's she was responsible that's for still a- you know, she was still very responsible for almost every bucket <laughs> Iowa scored. That's still a bad game. It's ten for twenty eight, Rudy. I don't care well, how you dice it. For her, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, and yes, if you said a team shot ten for twenty eight, you'd be like, "That's a bad game for that team." Completely inefficient game, absolutely. Yeah. It's a completely inefficient game. There's no question about it. But sitting here saying that she stopped her, if they played ten times, she averaged thirty five. She averaged thirty. She would on, average on how did she get it? How does she get it though? That's what that's what we, we don't know how she that's what counts. Could, would she miss? We know it's a make miss game. We know she's gonna get we gonna know she's gonna get her shot. So, so if she's twelve for thirty one, is that is she that a miss she I mean, missed four she missed four uncontested layups. Like is is is, is it's those, a that's game. that's contested that's what see that's our that's what we <laughs> that's where we have a difference in opinion. So for a women's bas- for a women's basketball if you just throw a fingernail by them, that's that's contested. I don't give a damn what you say. There was no that's fingernail contested. in these ones that I'm talking about. There was a couple fingernail ones. There was a couple that was nobody there. I mean, I watched Stalky miss two where there was no one at the rim. She just missed. <laughs> and you said, and I mean, Cardoso throws balls like fucking boulders at the back. Yeah. Like Angel Reese. Yeah. Like, I was telling you before, uh, earlier it was in, 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 the, in the group chat. You're talking about the WNBA. The WNBA is ruthless. When I mean by ruthless, they will cut your ass in the before you see the first game of the season as a first round pick. Yeah, it happened. Six of the top twelve picks in the first round of twenty twenty one are no longer in the WNBA, and this is why I say so people like Angel Reese need to fix their game because they won't be in the league very long. Camilo Cardoso will not be in the league very long. I think I think Card they'll stay around because 
Reese hustles. I think that that's something that that doesn't keep you in a twelve you, team league. You, you told me that she's Dennis Rodman, so yes, they, in the W in the NBA with thirty two teams and thirty teams and four hundred fifty players, you can have that. In, in in a league with twelve teams and they're cutting people who are the number one pick in the draft. No, you're not going to survive if all she can do is grab rebounds and miss layups. <laughs> because there's there's tons of six foot four women out there who are just as big, just as fast, just as athletic, and flat out more skilled. Yeah. Period. Now to finish with Caitlin Clark, I think she. I mean, she did everything she could. She did everything she could. I think it's unfair when people create this narrative of you can't be this because you didn't win a ring. She went to back-to-back national championship games with those people. <laughs> Don't say it, Rudy. Those you're you're going to have us off the air. Those people on her team. Those individuals that are on her team who would not, who are, none of them are more, I think there's one four-star <laughs> athlete on that team, and that's still. Uh, the rest of them are not four-star players. They're not all Americans. <laughs> they're, they might have been second or third team all state. Like, they're not stars. Yeah. And they would not play at South yeah. Carolina. They yeah. would not play at Stanford. They would not play at UConn. They wouldn't even play at Tennessee at this point. And Tennessee's I, not even that damn good anymore. Yeah. Um, they, they just wouldn't play. At the end of so, the day, like, Kay- it, Caitlin deserved her flowers. South Carolina deserved their flowers. Good job for the women. Um, I think we should, all, we should all appreciate and they should appreciate what Caitlin Clark brought to the league, what brought everybody eyes there, and everybody else benefited off of that. So and those and, people are white people, by the way. And we should be thanking, we should be thanking her for everything that came with it. So I, we all enjoyed it. It was a great tournament. Good for them. We wish them well in the WNBA. Now, Rudy, let's talk about the men's championship Bro. game. How do you feel about that one, Rudy? Danny Hurley's gonna be the, is one of the best coaches. He's Danny Hurley's an amazing. Danny Hurley is, comes from a, a, a gene pool of coaches. His father mm-hmm. is the greatest coach ever in high school boys basketball in Jersey at St. Anthony's. I mean, the dude, he is – you watch the game, Nick, and you're sitting here and you're watching the action. Every shot's wide open. Every shot they take is open. They don't take covered shots. Even the covered shot is not a highly contested shot. Mm-hmm. So we'll live with it. Huh? I said, so we'll live with it. We'll live with us. I, I won't be mad. At, I mean, I won't be mad at my team shooting it because it's, yeah, it's not bad. I, I mean, the, with the constant action, they're running around screen. It reminds you of watching Rip Hamilton, you know, back in the day. Like, he's constantly running. But it's not just Rip Hamilton. It's the whole damn team running circles around Donovan Klingon. And 12 Spencer is a dog. Newton is a dog. I, I, I mean, those guys. You don't know who any of them are. <laughs> but holy, they're so freaking good. It's crazy. Man. And that game, it was a good game for a half. It was 36-30 at the half. Mm-hmm. Purdue was there. Edie was doing great. Now, he did get a little stifled for about nine or ten minutes between the five-minute mark of the first half and about the five or six-minute mark of the second half. But he finished with 37, 10, and two. He shot 60% from the field. And people I'm reading say, oh, he got a bunch of points in garbage time. Do they stop scoring? Like, do we stop trying? (laughs) Exactly. UConn wasn't just giving him the basket. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. He was getting rebounds and dunking them things. And in the first half, he was making meat of Klingon. He was making those hook shots, great touch. And Klingon was doing everything he could. I mean, he had Klingon with four fouls. He fouled out the other guy, uh, the number 35. He fouled him out in five minutes of play. He played five minutes. He fouled out in five minutes. And Donovan and, and Draymond Green is on social media saying, great job. You did an awesome job. Man, motherfucker, you played five minutes. He had five fouls. Hey, that's what I'm that here for. a great job. That's what I'm here for, coach. He had 37. That's he what I'm here for. 25. Now, game plan was. Defensive game plan by UConn, I don't care how good it was. It was fabulous. And they were more disciplined than most NBA teams are. Because I'm going to give you that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you that. Edie's going to have to have 60 on us tonight mm-hmm. to beat us. Tell you, damn, you're 40, and they still lost by 15. I mean, um, cause, Rudy, because we literally, like, the, the the week before, we said, we, we picked Purdue, and I said, picked, and I said it's because they're going to, they're going to they're gonna crash, they're going to crash down on Edie, she's going to be too much, and then they're going to make, they're going to make they about 10, 15 threes. 
they crashed down a little bit in that 10 minute but they were so fast to recover to get back out there to other people and rotate i said i was that's nothing got that <laughs> they never bid on any drives so there was no driving kick and i also thought that you had guys that just missed shots number three he missed that 17 footer that's his supposed to his shot three going to the right fading back to the on, right back on I'm like bro I hit the same spot know, every their time guards Gurdu's guards were, were terrible they were absolutely terrible there was only one guy on that team who had an assist the entire game for Purdue. One guy. He had eight assists. And no one else had an assist. You're not going to beat UConn. And, I, I mean, look, UConn is just unbelievably good. They have had the, the most impressive two-season run that I've ever seen. They have, their lowest win was by 13 <laughs> over Miami in the Final Four last year. You, let's go. We are the only I'm, – I'm taking a moral victory on a 13-point loss because that was the, the closest game they played yep. in two years in the tournament. That's unreal. UConn is the best men's basketball program in college basketball in the last 45 years as a whole. They've won six rings in the last 25, which is only behind Kentucky with eight and UCLA with 11. They're tied with Carolina at six. Carolina's won three in the last 25 years. UConn's won six. It is what they've done, and they've done it with all variations, with, with Kevin Ali, with Jim Calhoun, and now with Hurley. But what Hurley's producing, I tell you right now, there's reports that Hurley was being offered like $15 million to go to Kentucky since John Calipari just dipped and went to Arkansas. Hurley's not going. Don't do it. Hurley's not going. Hurley's, oh. built, for, Hurley's built for the Northeast. He's created something incredible. Now I'm curious to see what they do next year. Because they're going to lose a bunch of guys again, but like them, like uh, you, like South Carolina women, they lost a bunch of people off last year's team. Klingon was a backup last year. Mm -hmm. Now he was a motherfucker to deal with, <laughs> but yeah. he was a backup. I I think Edie did a great, great job. Did everything he could. The Purdue guards let him down. They had open looks. They missed. I think at times they just don't drive to the the, the rim enough. Um, but holy shit, man, that offense of UConn. All right. Good. Rudy. All right, Rudy. Good. Oh. This is why the post game is finished in basketball. Because nobody wants to see a Frankenstein clumping his way around in the paint the whole game. You know why they couldn't drive the ball to the basket? Because their big man is standing there the whole time in the way. And you have to give him the ball every play because we got to come down. He has yeah. to touch it every yeah. play. And we got to watch him do his thing. Take this time. Now you're trolling. The guy. No, no, no. Right. This is yeah. why the big man this is why the big man oh, game is, is done. Because he takes oh, up the whole time. space. Nobody else could do anything because the offense has to go through him every play. And then we have to see, oh, okay. It, the offense becomes stagnant, Rudy. And if you don't double off of him, then everybody's just standing out there waiting for the it's ball and the ball. And the ball is not coming. Rudy, they shot seven threes for the game. They took the, they took them totally out the game from shooting the three ball. And you know what you need to do in the, in, in basketball to, to win nowadays? You need to hit some threes, Rudy. Yeah, okay. You can't hit six. That were, they were a plus fifteen on threes. At least they shot them. Purdue they, averaged, averaged eight point four. Yeah, yeah, but when a team, yeah, because nobody, everybody else wants to double and let let Ed can't. You know, let Edie not get his. But you know what they, UConn did? They also missed when they had them wide open. They took seven, Rudy. So let's say they made two more of them, and they shot 37%. Three of them, four of them, if you four, that's so, a nine-point swing. So now you want them to shoot. So, so four out of seven, you want them to shoot 57% from three. Bro, but that's they what were I'm wide. telling you. That's what I'm telling you. They were shooting. They have to shoot a little bit more. Like, you're just not going to. You, you, you tell me. You told me you want them to. So you want the old school style of basketball, and I tell you, Rudy, that's not going to win anymore because you have to shoot some threes. You have to get them up. You don't have to shoot threes. What are you talking about? Uh, oh, you, they, they, ran no, you, they ran no actions. Because you have, no. because your big man is a clump. He's a Frankenstein in there. You have, he has to get the ball to him. He's not, he's not. Pick and roll. They run pick and roll with him the whole fucking game. And they never run it's not up. a. It's not a fast pick and roll. It's not something I have to. I'm gonna be threatened by. All I'm worried about is them lobbing it or a, a dump. All I'm worried about is the dump pass to him because they're not really throwing the alleys to him. I'm not talking about any of that bullshit. You have the guy coming up 
first of all, no one's playing under the fucking screen with him. Oh, I'm saying they're not playing over the screen. He's too goddamn big. They ran under the screen. The shot is open. Take it. No, but we got to get the ball to him. No, you don't. Not every possession. <laughs> that's their offense. And so that's, that's, that's a coaching that's, error. Hey, so, so, what, so error. what happened that game was everybody else got out of rhythm. Their guards couldn't score in a whorehouse on, pay, on, a, on payday. They couldn't score any time. They couldn't score in a whorehouse on payday. And that was, that's why they lost. They were stagnant. They couldn't move. It was a slow game. And UConn did what they had to do. They it's ran perfect off. Benefits Purdue. Did, did, did not that day. <laughs> they, they, took every, they, took, they took everybody else out of the game. They were 6 for 18 in the second half while UConn got up 13 for 29. UConn was actually more athletic. They got to the rebounds more. Even though Edie, 7 foot, seven foot 4, should be getting most of the rebounds. That didn't happen either. Terrible. Yeah, right. so I mean, they, they were a small. smaller, they were a little bit of smaller team, and then they just got out, mad and out, and and beat. Rebounding is a, rebounding is a team thing. Seven Clark, four. Clark, I can tell you from the women's game, there was five different times that Caitlin Clark did not put her ass on somebody to box out, and that person grabbed the rebound. Yeah, I mean, person, that specific person who she was guarding grabbed the rebound. You have to box it. Disagreeing with you, Nick. I, I agree with you. You need to make some jump shots. Hey, we can't have shots. We can't have has to score besides you. Hey, yeah. the days the days of Viagra big man is over. Stiff big men are over. Stiff big men. Stiff big I don't think was just as stiff as, as easy if you want to be honest. Yeah, he was he didn't I move think. he didn't move well either. Where? Yeah, he didn't move. Top five pick. But, but at least Both some skills. At, at least he has the ability, to, you know, to shoot a three here and there. You know, open up a little bit. He missed the one he did take, but he took it and missed it. Okay, so now he's shooting three. I got it. The days are over, man. The stiff big man. <laughs> this you know, the UConn. I love it. You know, it was a great win by them. I'm very happy for them. I think Hurley's a beast. I think he's going to be. Done. He'll be in UConn now for 25 years, unless until he wants to retire. And yeah. congrats to both champions, USC we and. Yeah. All right, man. He's going, man. I'm sad for Burns, man. I don't want to go into that, but yeah, he, he ate, his, ate, yeah ate his lunch. Mark was true over at seven foot. Ate his lunch. Ate his lunch. Or a seven foot four, man. Listen, guys, with that being said, that's all college basketball. We're going to wrap that up. It's been a, a lengthy. It's been lengthy, but I hope everyone has been cleaning on to every, every, every minute, every second of the guys getting, um, Colorful and, and very descriptive. Let's get Those very descriptive. Um, yeah, we're gonna get back to that one. But um, that being said, we're gonna dive right into. White. Who cares? Uh, yeah, Rudy, we're gonna we're gonna need you to pause. You're on the bench right now. Um, we're gonna call you into the game right now, though. As 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 we segue off into college, uh, segue off college sports. We may be segueing back in. Because now it's the favorite time of the episode for most of you angry people out there, angry listeners. It's Rudy's rant. And I'm actually excited to hear what he's going to talk about. I'm not going to act like I'm shocked because I know what's coming. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Come on, Rudy. I am tired of the haters. I am tired. Of, not, I mean, you can hate me all day. I'm tired of the haters that are hating on Caitlin Clark. And it seems like it doesn't stop. From Diana Taurasi to Brianna Stewart to all these female basketball players who are in the WNBA who have something to say to find a way to try to try to d dismiss her skills and dismiss her ability and dismiss her accomplishments is absolutely exhausting. I, I don't get why a woman who is going to save your, I'm not going to say save your sport, but she's the closest thing to someone that who can save your sport. You better pray to God that she's great in the WNBA because if she's not, it's going to be an outright disaster for the world. The hype behind these other players in college basketball, let's be real. Angel Reese is not a good basketball She's not. She can rebound, and she can play defense. All-around game, no one's watching the WNBA to watch her. Play. All the things that came out in the past two years in reference to Angel Reese were, were typically based off negative things that happened. They were not based on her game. Did you ever see a highlight where you say, oh, my God, Angel Reese, amazing? No, nobody cares. 
We knew about her taunting after the championship. If she had not done that, nobody would have talked about her after that championship. Really. It's the taunting. Then she got suspended. Then it's the twerking on TikTok. Then it's her doing a showing her a video of her having her cooch waxed and then showing the world what it looks like on social media. And then her press conferences after South Carolina when she we're not scared of them nonsense. What, the fuck, what, what are you doing? And then finally her press conference to end her season when she's boo hoo boo hoo crying. We did not get Yeah, boo hoo she's boo hoo crying. No, I was gonna say twenty 20- 23 and 15, I mean, that's something. Right. Nick, stop it. You, you're, you're, you're trolling now because no. you know when I... you shoot the ball, when you shoot, when you shoot the ball to yourself, <laughs> you throw it against the board and it comes right back to your hands because you're 6'3 and more athletic than the people that are shorter than you. And you grab a rebound and you get credit for that as an offensive rebound. She was 17 and 20 against Iowa. She had 10 offensive boards. I would bet eight of them were shots back to herself. She was 7 for 21 from the field shooting layups. Layups. She missed 14 layups. Now, who else? So let's take a thing. Juju Watkins. She's been praised all year, and she deserves it. Absolutely. Did you know she shot 40% this year from the field? I know. 40%. Criticize Caitlin Clark. She takes too many shots. Juju Watkins took the exact same amount of shots, 22.7 to 22.4. Clark shot 46%. Clark never shot lower than 46% in her career in college. Watkins is shooting 40%. She's inefficient. She doesn't average nine assists a game. She averages more, just as, she has a zero, like a one to one assist to turnover ratio. Caitlin Clark has been hated on and it's exhausting. And I'm not taking away what Juju Watkins has done. I think she's special. I think she's going to be amazing. But she has to expand her game to make you Nick watch it to make me watch it because watching layup drills is not what I want to watch that said this past weekend in the final four Lynette Woodard made some comments at a final four lunch or dinner or whatever some event this weekend in the final four this is the same woman that Caitlin Clark had at her game when she broke her record Nick, did you know who Lynette Woodard even was? Don, did you? Example. Most people have no idea who Lynette Woodard was. I think Lynette Woodard played it with the Harlem Rope Trotter at some point. Um, I think. But she was at Kansas when I was a little kid, and you guys weren't even born yet. <laughs> and, and it's and and so no one knew who she was, realistically. And yet, when her name is being brought up. It's honoring her. And yet, at this press, at this little lunch or dinner, whatever it was, she says, I don't think my record has been broken. Because you can't duplicate what you're not duplicating. So unless you come with a men's basketball and a two-point shot, you know, but just for you, so you, under- you can understand, so you can help me spread the word. What kind of hating-ass bullshit is that? Why are you so fucking salty? Why are you so mad? Nobody cared about your freaking butt before Caitlin Clark came along. No one acknowledged you. No one even knew who you were realistically. There are people that, of course, there are people that knew her, for sure. Mm-hmm. The vast majority of this of the public had no idea who she was. And she's sitting here at the final four where this young woman's playing and you're talking shit about her. You could say she didn't talk shit about her. That's, that's, that's salty, sideways shit talking about something. You ain't breaking my record. Yeah, she did. And she did it making much harder shots than, than you did. She did. And keep it real, a little bit better competition. I mean, we don't, we don't go Way crazy better. about, you know, but it, it's definitely better competition now. Exactly. It's like saying, you know, women's basketball in the 80s was, <laughs> I don't think Cheryl Miller's scoring 100 points on someone right now. Like, maybe in high school. They but, say Cheryl <laughs> had that game. But, you know, it, it's just not, it, I just think it's so unnecessary when you're trying to build a sport, you need her to be successful. You need it. Like, forget the bullshit. They need her to be great. Because before her, it was Sabrina Ionescu. They thought Sabrina was in the ring. No, man, no one cares about Sabrina Ionescu. Nobody cares. The most we've cared about her is watching her shooting against that. How many, and how many New York Liberty games did you see in the last 
two years. I think the last person that probably got like a little bit of hype, like that brought people there was probably Candace Parker, just because she looked good and yeah. then she played good. It helped. It, helped. It, it definitely helped. But her, but her skills was a one, but her skills are not, they don't generate male interest. No, 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 no. So like we, what we talked about earlier. Similar game to Angel Reese, just she makes those shots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, she's way better than Angel Reese. Yeah. It's like, not even close. But she makes those layers. Like mm -hmm. she, she's even, she's way, I think she's even more athletic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, I, I remember Shamiqua Holds Claw when I was when I was younger, and and I mean there were players that were really incredible back in the day, but no one ever had this type of hype. It's because what she does, they can't do. I'm not watching freaking women's basketball to watch layups because they can't dunk. You said they should lower the rim to nine feet, nine and a quarter. Surprised you haven't been crucified yet by the by the women's congregation of America for sexism. <laughs> I agree with you. They should. But if you can't dunk, guess what I want? I want to see you drop some freaking 25 foot threes. Yeah. I want to see you <laughs> dribble around the ball and make Haley Van Lith go in a circle and like <laughs> that's that that's the stuff that Steph Curry does to grown men. Ba 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 ba. Whoop. Oh, there you go. Oops. So last night he had a three at the top of the key. He was so wide open. I was like, they just gave him a free throw. That's what changed the game on the men's side was everybody were in tune with the dunking and things of that nature. But when he came back with the distance shooting, that like, like that distance shooting that like and that that Caitlin also have what I call it parking lot defense that you need for her. Like as soon as she come in the parking lot, you need to be covering her. If she goes to the bathroom, you need to go there and and wipe for her. Um, so that's, this is where that's becomes, where that's the difference. So this is where it becomes sad. They make these comments and then they run back and have to like apologize, mm -hmm. right? Because they're getting crucified for what they said. And you know what? If you feel something, that's where I think you're pathetic. Because why well, you apologize? I don't believe what you the said. Outra the outrage. Don't out don't don't apologize. What are you apologizing for? The outrage. Fuck the outrage. You were nobody before. You're still <laughs> nobody now. You, she wrote, to clarify my, re my remarks made at an award ceremony on Saturday, no one respects Caitlin Clark's accomplishments more than I do. This is why I accepted Iowa's invitation to participate in Caitlin's senior day. My message was, a lot has changed on and off the court, which makes it difficult to compare statistical accomplishments from different eras. Each is a snapshot in time. Caitlin holds the scoring record. I salute her and will be cheering for her throughout the rest of her career. Really? That's not what you said. Don't run it back. I can't stand it when you run a run. If you believe something, stick to it. Because it, first of all, you, it's salty as shit, but you're now running it back. That's pathetic. So, and I don't believe it because I don't, I, I, I'm, it just, it's tiresome. I think Caitlin Clark is going to be a sensational player in the WNBA. And the difference between the WNBA and college basketball is if they double team or what's going to happen. She's got players to pass the ball to who are going to make bucks. So get them layups. You can't double team her 28 feet in the rim. Can you? No. You could. You'll you should. smoke your ass with fucking backdoor passes and get women layups. Mm -hmm. And they'll make them. She'll have athletes. Kelsey Mitchell is an athlete. Malia Boston's a great player. Those are her teammates next year. Or, hell, three months from now. So, yeah, I'm sick and tired of listening to this fucking hate for this woman. Uh, all these broads, all these women who talk shit about her, they're all going to get a fucking rude awakening. Because she's going to be the rookie of the year. She's going to average 20 plus a game. Hell, she might lead the leading score. The, 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 the leading score last year was 24 games. She may lead the leading score. So it wouldn't shock me. Would it shock you? No. No. And, and, and the girl who was cheering against her last on, on Sunday afternoon? Your best friend, Leah Boston. Clapping it up. Let's go. Give me layups. I'm, I'm averaging 20 a game. Did you give me layups? <laughs> so all that, they're going to find out real fast. And I do think she has things to work on. Absolutely. And she has, needs to play better defense. But Steph Curry don't play an ounce. Hey, hey, hey. He tries. He tries. He tries. 
Yeah. He's not that bad. He's not that bad. He does make dumb fouls, but. But uh, that's all I got, man. Let that water. Come on. Come on, dude. I'm glad before we get kicked off the airwaves, that's all you got. You should hear a show that I listen to with, uh, called uh, JB Show with Big Smitty. <laughs> he man. He's a former coach of independence on the Netflix show. Yeah. Hey. Nah, he's way worse than me. <laughs> you, you know what I wanted South Carolina to do? What? I wanted them to rub it in Caitlin Clark's face about her doing this to them last year. I wanted all of them to hold their hand up like Monica. And... Nick, Nick, Nick. Raven Johnson was the one who she did. I don't care. Her. I don't care. I wanted the whole team to step up for Raven. One for 11. I, I wanted all one the... One for 11. I wanted all her teammates to step up for... Step up for her like they, you know, like, like, I, like Monica I, did in Love and Basketball. Uh, I'm glad they did. They hold their hand up like this, like Monica did after she made that shot in practice, and just hold it up every time. I got one final thing. <laughs> oh not lord! A, not on that specific. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. Did you see the picture when Don Staley was doing this, and the confetti is flying on her? They got these photo of her. Is this about, at times I wonder, these coaches, is it more about them or their players? Because that is the most attention grabbing. I mean, it rem- They won, Rudy. The photos with the fucking confetti coming Rudy, down. they won. It's a championship, Rudy. I know you. Is it about the players or it's, the coach? It's about both, Rudy. She won, too. I don't. I know you want to be a sour grape and take if, everybody if, enjoying me. If I was your AAU coach and we went to the AAU nationals and we won the first place and the videos of Rudy doing this shit and not of Nick doing this shit. That's the, oh, that's, that's up to the camera people. But I mean, you have your moment too. You're part of this. You get no. You're the biggest part. You get no video. Huh? You get no video time. That's all <laughs> me. <laughs> I'll be known as a Gucci Rudy. Gucci Rudy. Louis Vuitton Don. Gucci, yeah, you are Gucci Rudy. Go ahead, go ahead, Don. But Donald said we got to get this thing going. No, because it's like it's 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 out of control at this point. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go right back into uh Monica, one of your fan favorites, uh Don's dimes. You missed one last week. I just didn't have it with me. Didn't have the sauce, but this week I have the sauce. Oh, Interesting. Right. We're gonna kind of stay into the same realm. This is a conversation for the WNBA. Uh, if you guys were in power of the WNBA, what would you do to bring excitement and viewership and you energy run that, to the run that game? Back, run that back by us again. Tell us that again. Say it again. Say it again. If you were the powers that be for the WNBA uh-huh. and you can do anything for the game to excite the game, and bring more viewership to the game, what would it be? I, I have my idea of what I would do. Um, I'm not sure how big of a fan of you guys are with television shows. Um, not as much as now, today, because broadcast sitcoms are not a thing anymore. Everything is streamed. But when we were growing up, Nick and Rudy, uh, Rudy, you're like 55, but you're going to remember this. Um, when we were growing up in the 90s, Fox, ABC, NBC, if they were introducing a new show, they would put it right after a show we loved. So what they would show like Saved by the Bell or Cosby Show or something, and then like introduce us to something. What ended up happening was the networks were retaining about 75% of viewers because they just stayed. Like they tuned in at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, whatever it was. And they stayed to watch, and it was something that the cable networks picked up. So now, if you look at NFL games, Fox, CBS, a lot of them do it. They introduce shows that are either brand new or are not doing good on their days. Let's just say a Tuesday at 930, and they'll put it right after a Thursday night game or a Monday night game to try to retain that. And what ended up happening, it gives a spark to that show. Where people are like, hey, maybe, maybe this is not that bad. Let me check it out a little more. So what I would do is there, the NBA is the only reason the WNBA is alive. 
financially. It's the only reason. They pump so much money into it. They've had to save it multiple times. But they, they have it in a window where the WBA is starting where the appetite for the game just isn't there. I think they need to mirror their schedules a little closer and have these games a little more concurrent. Where if you have a, you're, lo- you're losing the opp- opportunity right now. If you have a Warriors-Lakers game, you know 12 million people, 13 million people are going to tune in. Hey, man, throw in a Caitlin Clark game before that. Throw in a Las Vegas Aces game before that. Because people will tune in. You have to understand, these talk shows, these intro shows are averaging 9 million. Like, don't know the respect to Kenny Smith and Shaq, but I don't want to hear these motherfuckers. Like, I love them. Love them. But I don't care to hear. I would watch a WNBA game as an introduction to it. So if I was the powers that be and I was the commissioner for WNBA, I would go to Adam Silver's office and say, hey, we want to change our schedule and be a lot more concurrent with you guys because we're not we're not getting our own footing but when it comes to viewership. They, they want to do their own thing. I mean, Donald? No, when, I. When, that's when, why when, I said when, what I would do well, if, uh, if sorry, I was okay. the powers that be. That's we, what I would do. But the NBA no, will be. You have to start the game at like five o'clock because the NBA starts at seven thirty. Like, okay, I'm not. I'm not stopping my league to to, to do everything for your league. I, I get that. You, you have to. Okay, I need you to open your mind up. <laughs> I get what, I get what you're saying. You're right, I'm asking right, you, right, when would you run concurrent? This yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to say. No, we get we get what you're saying. Play 36 games. The NBA is 82. So when would you run it? In no. Okay. I think you you guys are being a little too critical. Okay. I think I'm asking you a question. No, I need you to listen. I need you to open your ears right now. I just need you both to listen. Okay. All right. What I would do if I was a commissioner <laughs> would be go with go down and silver and have them a little more concurrent, not as within the league right now. The leagues cross each other where there's only about 10% of games going on. Yeah, I would make it towards at least maybe 20 of those games are going on to give a better footing where you can find games where you can make the schedules work, where you can get a game on at 3 a, 3 p.m. on a Sunday before everything. Because if, if you guys are paying attention, ABC has changed their schedules for the game. And the NBA is in the midst of a new media contract. They're about to renew all of their contracts where it's going to change times. They're, they're most likely, some of them are talking about going back to NBC, which were the glory days. I loved when NBA was on NBC. But now would be the time where you can actually say, hey, if we want this league to actually thrive, let's make them a part of what we're trying to do with our media. Because right now, it's going to be the best time to have those conversations. The most watched college game was the girls' game? Was the women's game? So now you have that star coming to the league. Rudy. You can have those conversations now, where it's like, Rudy. "Hey, Rudy, Rudy. let's try to figure this out in a way where it makes sense for the game to bring viewerships." So, yeah. all right, you trying to throw this one at us before Rudy dies in? Mine's gonna be quick and short. Um, I already told y'all nine feet. You keep it there, tap it, bam. We get room, women closer to the rim. Maybe get a little more dunking, a little bit more finesse, you know. Women that can jump 20 inches off the ground, you got a chance to dunk. All right, that's one thing. You know what's really popping in the world nowadays? Reality TV. Reality TV. Maybe we do a little bit more something like uh, what they do for uh, men's uh, NFL football. What is, what is it called? What is it called? HBO during the offseason? Hard, hard knocks. Hard knocks. Hard knocks. Uh, maybe hard tips. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. More of a reality TV style of it, where we're getting them more. <laughs> we're getting more in tune to the lifestyle of what's going on in the back of the scene. Maybe what's going on more in the locker room. Maybe we hear a little bit more of a cat fight things. People like uh, when people argue and fight and things in that nature. Maybe that might get people more in tune with it and want to watch a little bit more. We like controversy. The world likes controversy. They tune into controversy. You get some controversy in the locker rooms. Or, you know, people get to see it and go find out why I'm not passing the ball to to Caitlin Clark every time she comes down the court because I really hate her guts because of something she said. Hey, maybe we might get a little bit more views. You threw this at me, and that's what I came up with. Don, Don, saved by Nick. Bum. I actually think that's a great idea. 
I wouldn't call it what he called it, but I, I, I think that's actually a really good idea because I think it could it could potentially drive interest. Now, let's not lie to ourselves about the ratings of the women's game. It was driven by one person. And it outdrew the men because the men were playing at 9.20 at night on cable. And the women played at 3 o'clock on ABC. Cable to regular TV, there is still a massive, massive difference. A men's national championship in 19, and you couldn't name me one player that played in that game. They had an average 19 point something million. And that was on CBS. So it makes a difference. And that game was still at 9.20. But when you take stuff off CBS, even Nick and I, we're like, Where's the game? I was looking for it. Like, looking for the game. I'm looking on CBS. Like, where's the game? And I'm, oh, it's on TNT. Oh, TNT the, the and TBS. Are, I, I yeah. When I saw that, I said the ratings are going to suck. TNT and TBS. They put the Final Four on TV on, on, on cable. They put the damn national championship on cable. You literally eliminate one third of the nation's population from watching. You still do. People don't all have cable TV or streaming or anything. They don't have it. Um, that said, I think there are. I don't. I mean, could you? I think there could be women's games that are lead into men's games. Does that mean they're going to watch them? No. I think the, what's going to happen is I'm going to take Caitlin Clark. I'm going to go to a, a, a scientific lab and I'm going to clone <laughs> 30 of her so that she's on every team. Someone like her with her skills and uh -huh. ability. I really think at the end of the day, it comes down to skills and ability uh -huh. because men, you can only keep men's attention for so long because this is the problem with the WNBA and people don't want to accept it. The people that watch men's basketball, the NBA, it's 85% men. You don't see women going to NBA games by themselves. I have heat season tickets. Nick, you went to a game. There's plenty of women there, and they're usually with men. They're not going with their girlfriends. The so women sitting courtside are not sitting there with their girlfriends. They're sitting there with their sugar dads. And, they're and, and the, the other cute girls are being looked at by NBA players. They got tickets. They already got tickets got from tickets the NBA players. They got tickets from players. <laughs> yeah. So let's not lie to ourselves about who's supporting the league. That's why every time I hear these different leagues say, oh, the NFL is being, be, being you know, 50%. No, the freaking hell it's not. No, it's not. And the NBA, no, it's not. It's a men-driven league. Men watch it, and they bring their wives and girlfriends and whatever along with them. That's why they go. The women, though, are not supported by women. You're not so. Why is it the WNBA support system 85% women? That's the problem. You want men to support a woman's sport. Women know. The women who go to the NBA games know that the WNBA is not very good. They know. Not dumb. They know what they know. The, I watch that guy. I'm watching the best men in the world play ball. Watching this? A, lay, a, a miss layup drill? Like, I, I, I don't want to watch that. Stop expecting men to support your sport when you won't support your sport. It's that simple. You have to increase the female interest in women's basketball. And until you do that, I don't think there's anything that you really can do because the skill level is not good enough to keep the attention of men. Indiana will have plenty of viewers, and they're putting every single game on TV. They should probably run an Indiana Fever game before a playoff game, because I know they, they mix like end of March, end of May to, to June, and that's about it, the, the conference finals and the finals. You need to put an WNBA game In the middle. at 630. In the middle. Or whatever. Yeah, and you may need to start a game at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. You may. Mm -hmm. You may have to do that. I, I, I don't know. The weekend game? The Sunday game or whatever can, they have? You can find it in the middle, maybe. You got to be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon before the men's game at 7. Mm. So, yeah, I think that could work. But I, at the end of the day, I, I, you got to – the rim being dropped down will be major for them. And I'm, I'm so tired of hearing that, oh, my shot will get messed up. No, it will not. Your You'll shot adjust. will get better. You'll adjust. <laughs> Your shot will get better. You lower the rim for me, I can shoot the ball better. But y'all should see me. You should see me at an elementary school when the rims are eight feet. I am amazing. <laughs> and, I, and so I do actually think the Knicks' ideas are actually great. Um, that's sick, huh? I think. I mean, I wouldn't call it hard tits, but you know, hard knockers. Even better. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that could be cool because I think if you see cat fights in a locker room, that'd be freaking funny as shit. And you know, hell, if you want to be real, that's how the UFC was saved. You know that, Donald. The UFC got saved by the Ultimate Fighter. 
and Forrest Griffin and Stefan Bonner having that slobber knocker fight. That saved the UFC. They were broke. They weren't putting any more money into that thing. And that thing saved it. Reality TV, as much as I hate it overall, yeah. sports ones, mm-hmm. they work for the most part. So that, that's a great idea. And cloning 30 Kate and Clarks. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're just going to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, the women are, and by the way, Don, the women are trying to separate from the, from the, from the NBA on the TV rights thing. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, what what I said had nothing to do with them doing their TV rights together. So, um, so are we going with hard tits or hard knockers? <laughs> we need no, we no, we absolutely knockers. need to stop. I will, I will leave the show if you continue to say that. It's ridiculous. It's it's it's. it's, it's ridiculous. I, I, I apologize. It's ridiculous. I'm sorry. It's ridiculous. This is a. Let's act like adults. Someone has to have decorum <laughs> with, between us. This is out of control. Oh, uh, that being said, job. we're gonna go right into uh, Nick's picks. Uh, what, 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 what picks do you have this week? I'm Next done. Picks. I'm not picking anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. The Heat versus the Sixers, and we got we lost. Stop picking their, us, damn it. I, I, I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore, man. I went to Gamblers uh, Anonymous. Anonymous. Um, I think I have a problem, um, and it's done with me. But I got out of class and I said, "Fuck it, let's bet again. <laughs> let's do it again, baby. Let's do it again. We're we're going back to the NBA, man. The Seventy Sixers need it. They're playing against the Magic on Friday." Um, that should be a good game. The 76ers are fighting for a playoff position. We're going to talk about that a little bit later if we get to it. Um, 76ers over the Magic. We're going with the Pacers over the Cavaliers that day. And we're going with the um, – that's an easy one. Not going to make much money off it. We're going to parlay that with the Heat over the Raptors um, as we finish the season. And also, that'll be it. We're going three-teamer. So 76ers, Pacers, and it was the Heat. That's our three-team for, for Friday night. I, I'd be careful on the heat. Money, yeah. money. So just because, it's, just because we can't really dive into it like I really want to because we don't really have the odds yet, but that's why I'm a money line it. But if you see a better opportunity where you, you see the points and you could, they give you a little bit more points on those teams that I mentioned, take it. Take advantage of it. At least I will. Y'all don't have to. Philly could jump from, five to, from seven to five. Yes, it's, it's a big week going on in basketball, y'all. Um, tune in. That's why I'm staying with basketball instead of going in a little bit to uh, baseball, which I will go into next week. I think I have some picture of baseball. I'm going to ride a little bit of the the, uh, the Yankee wave. Because y'all are like cockroaches. I, I said that last week. Y'all coming out of uh, the woodworks, and now y'all like cockroaches. Y'all can't get rid of y'all. Y'all just everywhere. So uh, now photos so starting to go back down to earth, but, you know. It's all good. Spoken like a true hater. Yeah, with that being said, we're just going to, you know, get off the hate. And um, we're going to do a little audible here. Because oh, I want to. Oh, shit. What? I, I was ready for an audible. Omaha. Oh, yeah. You know, we're going to do an audible. Omaha. Uh, I wasn't ready for that, so bro. Six years to segue. Cause time, bad, is, time, is, time is of the essence. I want to hear. Um, We're going to go right into combat corner. UFC yeah. 300 is coming up. Doing? Yeah, yeah, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna go right into that. As time, you guys have been very lengthy. Um, we wanna go in the combat corner and discuss that UFC 300 is coming up. It <sighs> seems like we may be watching it all together. Actually, we may not. Nick has a family engagement, so he will not be at the party. I was the ready watch party. to come, man. Next week, is and, it gonna um, be a, it's gonna. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, dude. It's gonna be something else the following week. No, not, UFC not is not every week. No, not, it's every not, week, but it's not, and that's, not something that's a, good. It won't be something good. Yeah, okay. and it's not a premiere fight. Okay. Um, and the and the the hundred fights are huge. Hundred, the two hundred was a huge fight. So three hundred, I think it's getting people excited, and it's not going to live up to the hype. But either way, Rudy, um, what do you what are your takes? What are your thoughts? UFC three hundred. UFC three hundred. This was the worst promoted fight card ever. The worst put, worst put together fight card ever. I think they paid Jamal Hill a whole lot of money to magically get healthy because he had been saying he would not be healthy by April to fight this fight. And then all of a sudden, he is the fighter taking on Alex Pereira in the light heavyweight championship fight. Um, I am a big Pereira fan. I think he will knock Hill stone cold out. Um, I don't think it's going to be all that entertaining, to be honest. Uh, the card itself 
I think some of the undercard fights are better than the main card fights. The, the Zhang Wei Li fight versus Zhang Jianan for the women's uh, strawweight title. They should have run that fight in China. It is not of interest to people in the U.S. Realistic. It would have been the perfect fight for a card in, in um, I know they've, they've brought cards to China before or a country. I don't know if they brought to Hong Kong or, but they would have been better in, in, in Asia because that would have been bananas over, over here. It's a co-main event and I think Zhang Wei Li's going to run the, wipe the floor with him. Now, Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway for the BMF title, which I think is the corniest nonsense on earth created to make Jorge Masvidal important with that Nate Diaz nonsense, and then they ran in a Dustin Poirier version against Justin Gaethje, and Gaethje gets the win. Gaethje's fighting Max Holloway. I don't think Max Holloway has a chance in hell of being Justin Gaethje. I think it'll be a fun fight, but I don't think it's going to be a competitive fight. And, and that's part of the problem with this card, is like they piece it together so poorly, and they were desperate. Because they, they, at times they run, they put too many title fights on certain cards, and then they, they like, there's no reason that Drikas Duplessis is not on this card. You know, he should have been on this card. Um, I think it would have been the perfect time. I think he should have been rematching Sean Strickland, because I thought Strickland won that first. Now, you have Charles Oliveira with Armand Saruki, and that's a good fight. That's a real good fight, actually. That, that's going to be a hell of a fight. But then they want to do this corny nonsense, putting Bo Nickel on the main card. Bo Nickel? It's ridiculous. Like, that's the stuff that pisses me off. You're wasting... People are paying to watch this shit. I'm not paying to watch Bo Nickel against Cody Brundage. Like, that Brundage, Brundage that's just silly. He's a... Nick, he's a minus 3,000. Minus 3,000? On the main card. Minus 3,000. So that means he has... No that, means he, that means he walks into the cage and the guy lays down and goes to sleep. Yeah. Like, that's how they're treating that fight, and that's on the main card. Now, there's some prelim fights that are sick. Yuri Prohotska, Alexander Rakic, mm -hmm. that's a great fight at light heavyweight. Great, great fight. The winner is probably going to face the winner of the Hill Pereira fight. Um, Pereira already beat Prohotska when they fought. Calvin Cater versus Aljo, Aljamain Sterling, that's a fun fight. That's a real fun fight. Let's see how Aljo does at 145. And does have to cut a million pounds to get down there. Now, will he still be the human backpack at 145? I don't know. But he beats Calvin Cater. He's up for a title shot. Like, he'll be up for a title shot real fast if he wins this fight. Because there's not a whole lot of guys. You know, you have um, Taporia's going to fight Volk again. Taporia beats Volk again. It's hard to keep K Aljo out of this conversation. You know, now, Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. That's an interesting, fun fight because Harrison never fought uh, Nun, you know, Amanda Nunes, and now she's fighting Holly Holm. She's going to cut 20 pounds more than her 55 fights at PFL and fight at 135. I have, my, I have a feeling that she's going to weigh in at like 142, 143, and this turns into a catch weight at 145. I yeah. have this feeling because I don't see how – Kayla Harrison is built like a brick. She is absolutely yoked. I don't know where you're pulling 20 pounds off of her body. Because when she weighed in at 155, she looked drawn in. I think she's weighed in at 45 once. 10 more pounds. If she actually gets to 35, first, I think Holly Holmes is going to beat her regardless. But if she gets to 35, I don't think she lasts a round. She'll be, she'll be exhausted. Now, you know, then you have a few other, Sadiq Youssef, Diego Lopez. And then, I mean, under the, the early prelims, Jalen Turner, Renato, you know, Renato Moicano, Jessica Andraj is on that. Bobby Green, Jim Miller. The leadoff fight is Cody Garbrandt and Davison Figueredo. Figueredo. That's a, that's a hell of a fight. Although, I think Figueredo's going to knock fucking Cody Garbrandt straight out. But overall, this card, yes, from bottom to top, top to, from, I think really from bottom to top, it's actually really good in that regard. But the top three fights, the main card to me is like, eh. it's names, it's belts. So it's, eh. I have more excitement to see Dustin Poirier fight Benoit Saint Denis in my realistic. I had a lot more. I was way more excited to see that fight. Way more excited. 
I'm gonna watch. I love MMA, but if you ask me who I'm picking, I'm picking Pereira. I'm picking. Don't take my picks because my picks usually suck. By the way, I get too emotional about stuff. Um, Pereira, I'll take Wei Lee. I'll take Gaethje. I'll take Oliveira, and I'm gonna take Bo Nickel. Obviously, he's minus three thousand, and this guy. I mean, it's just, it's just, I'm sorry, it's minus twenty one hundred. Now it went down. My Ooh, look, might might take Let's advantage. Get, I mean, of, might take advantage of making them five cents on that one. I might <laughs> do a five. I might do a five five parlay there with these with these fights. I might, you know, for twenty bucks. But, yeah, he degenerate that, gamblers. He degenerate gamblers. Thank you for your <laughs> your soliloquy, Rudy. We needed that uh, for the fans who listen and don't know much about MMA. They get to get some insight here. We're gonna go off the uh, UFC. Um, actually, I I I wish I saw it. I had some friends. Nick, we may be able to get a uh, see if you can get uh, the celebrity um, Xavier Havism on the show. I would love to talk about wrestling. Uh, wrestling, wrestling's back. WrestleMania just broke records, uh, bro, so we may have awesome. to get him as a as a as a guest host to talk about all things wrestling. Uh, because no, uh, no diddity, no doubt. We got we got to do that. I did not. I haven't watched wrestling awesome. in about seventeen years. It was, but awesome. they just broke records. We're not gonna we're not gonna do that, Rudy. No, we're I not think getting real into thing, real it. Quick. I want to think one, one thing. Of course, when you got one, one more thing. One thing. Yeah. One, when of Cody course. Rhodes won of over course. Roman Reigns, it's scripted right but it wasn't the emotions that guy felt after being basically here's the company you're carrying the torch for our company videos of his dad like that crap was so fucking emotional man if you watch that and you really watch wrestling that shit had me in tears that's all yeah i wouldn't know didn't watch it nick do you have something to say I might have to copyright that one. I don't think y'all even. I might have to copyright that one. No yeah. diddity, no diddity, no doubt. I'm gonna have to copyright that. So no. you took you took seven seconds from the show to say that. I'm gonna have to copyright that because somebody else gonna come up and use my words and say no diddity, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> I, I I think that's that's a good one. I don't know. I don't care what y'all think, man. That was a good one. That was a good one. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. As we as we get off that, um, copyright, copyright. We're we're gonna go to the association. Okay. Uh, Gian- Giannis went down yesterday. Ooh, ooh. Uh, they're shutting them down for the rest of the regular season. That's what are your thoughts about that? What do do you think? It's a big deal. Do you think it's a small deal? Do you think? What do you guys think about him going down? You want to go first, Rudy? It's catastrophic. Mm. You just call it whatever you want. It's catastrophic. It is is absolutely horrible. It's it might be one of the worst injuries he could have. Uh, you know, there's lots of injuries. If he sprained his ankle, tape it up. No, you know, what do you call it? Tore it all shot. Mm-hmm. Painkiller. Yep. And you know, it's he'd have two weeks, ten ten days or so, because the season ends Sunday. Mm-hmm. The play ends Tuesday and Wednesday, I think, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they start off, I think, Friday. Or Saturday, like he'd have ten days, ten to eleven days, but with a calf, he didn't tear his Achilles. But Good. we all saw what happened when Kevin Durant went down with a pulled calf muscle, strained calf muscle, and he was out for like six weeks. Yeah, four to six weeks in the playoffs that year, and then he comes back in the first game. He comes back, pops. Is... I, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I think for Milwaukee, it's catastrophic. I don't think Milwaukee. I pray to God that he's the seven seed now, because I think this is cake at this point. If he can't play, they can't. I don't give a damn about Bam. I don't care about Middleton. If Giannis can't play, they can't. They cannot. I, and it, it, it is a cat. It's catastrophic because you don't know. Even if he says I'm good, you don't like. You might have felt good in workouts and in, in jogging and. You're not playing the way you're. He's an explosion guy. If he was a fat, slow post, it's different. But he's an explosive, ball in hand, dunking. Like I think it's a. It sucks for him for the the Bucks, but I also don't think the Bucks are going much of anywhere because they're basically 500 since Doc Rivers became their coach, and he has run that team into the fucking ground. 
He's the dis- he's the disaster. Nick? He is exactly what I expected him to be, Nick. Trash. They can't, and he's doing a great job of it. They can't turn it turn it around like the ninety four Rockets, ninety five Rockets. Turn and what around? The the season. The Rockets were the nat were the NBA champs. They were previously the champs in a few years, a couple years ago. So you're gonna like go back five years. Yeah, I'm just saying. Five years. Nah, that that injury is definitely is devastating to them. Um, but um, Giannis has shown that he could come back and. In time that we don't think he can, you know, and, and still play great basketball like he did before they, the year they won the championship where he kind of, we thought his knee was done for. He came back and came back in the finals and made a, you know, was outstanding. Basically dropped the 50 piece in the last game for them to win it coming back down 0-2. Um, so, but I think they could win a series. I think they could beat Orlando. I think they could beat Cleveland. Will those teams be at that position? Maybe they fall to three and then they play them. You know, they they could be Cleveland, they could be Orlando. Will it be a dog fight with Indiana? I think it will be, but um, I think Bobby Portis is a you know if he can play, Rudy. He can play. Well, he has like twenty in the first half. He can, and, he can play. He has You're twenty in the first thirty-one a game with um, twelve a game. And now and then Lillard is, has the freedom to be Lillard. Lillard. You have Middleton has to come out of the the trenches that he's in and find that Clay Thompson newfound juice that he's on and shoot the ball like he's been doing. I think they still have enough talent to to get out the first round. After that, who knows, man? And it just sucks for them, man, because I just don't think that they had a window to take advantage of, and they just haven't. They Um, were 30 and and 13 when they fired Adrian Griffin. They are 48 and 31. They are 18 and 18 with Doc Rivers. Yeah, the window's closing for them, man, but – Giannis is, getting, Giannis is getting older in the way he plays. Let me ask you this. Is it worth the risk? It depends. Is it worth losing him for a season? It, I, so, a season I have, and a half because it's basketball. Yeah, so you have to look at the uh, – you have to really look at the x-rays and things in that nature. And if it's any, – not any tears, it's just like sore things in that nature. There are no tears it, in Kevin Durant's leg. I know it's there. iffy, man. But you can't go by what Kevin, what happened to Kevin Durant. Can you just go by that one? I mean, Rudy Gay. Yeah. Like every guy that has a pulled calf muscle and comes back too quick, pops. It, it, yeah, it's usually the calf to the like, to the Achilles. So you might. You, 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 yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, it's a hard situation. Yeah, it's a hard situation for sure. Team doctors will always say he's okay. Yeah. Because they want him to play. Yeah. You can't trust some doctors. He has to go to a personal doctor to have him take a look at it. and him saying, Oh, I feel good. Well, you feel good now. You feel well, you feel good running forty two minutes. Yeah, the window's definitely closing, man. I, I I don't like what's going on. You gotta maximize your window, man. I mean they can play they can play Thanasis. He he's he's he has a solid highlight tape. He has a really solid highlight they make tape. Every, I can have a solid highlight tape for Christ's sake. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be so bad on Doc Rivers, man. One year he lost. He had James Harden as his point guard. I don't count so that. He has ta- he has talent all the time is what you're saying. So, he so we, so to think about this one right here, we can't say that the NBA or is a, is a players' league, and then when the coaches lose, you blame it on the coaches. They fired a coach because they were thirty and thirteen. And someone internally, probably Giannis, was upset. And their defense got better and their offense got worse. So it actually went negative. Their offense efficiency went down. Their defense efficiency went up. But it went so far down that they're still negative to what they were. They're, they're, 18 and 18? Rudy, their problem is they just their three stars haven't played together. And that's why I said they were pretenders. They, they only played six so games. To, and you said they're going to the finals. Since they had Doc Rivers, they only played six games together. That's not. That's tough. Like, how are we going to find out about ourselves without our, our Bro, three I don't give a shit. I'm a Heat fan. I've had, <laughs> I've had 36 different lineups this year. They can kiss my ass. That's, that's also true. Every single time we have a healthy guy come back, two guys go down. Yeah. And hey, you could be a Bulls fan and not and be in a play and play your one game and then go home. That could happen. <laughs> that could happen. I tell you what, we've, we've lost to the Bulls, I think, twice this year. I mean, I don't know. Like, I hope I pray we just win our our playing game and then just go about our business because we have so much talent. Like we thought that this was the year. Like 
we have the talent to get it done. Like we have all these players now. Duncan Robinson coming off the bench. Hero came back. Then Rozier get hurt. There's always somebody. Every time somebody comes back, somebody else go out. I I never seen anything like this before in my life. Except for I my have Donald, I have the Yankees. <laughs> the Yankees. The last three years, everyone. God loves them. dang man. They have the same training. Hey, hey, dang. Dang. Yeah. Well, uh, as we segue off, uh, wow, things uh. I t- is that what the kids say? Stray? I caught a stray <laughs> for being a Bulls fan. I just <laughs> caught a stray, and I was just minding, I was minding my business. And um, yeah, we're gonna give some closing thoughts as we wrap up the episode here. Kind of the floor is yours, guys. I'm going to introduce another new segment. So, I'm, but I'm gonna let you guys get off your closing thoughts before I I go into the, the new segment and we're off the air. Any uh-huh. closing thoughts? Man, I just can't wait for for playoff basketball on my end, man. I, I'm interested to see these matchups and how the Western Conference is going to play out. Who's going to be the playing team? Will the Warriors get the seventh seed and play maybe New Orleans or something like that or the Suns? And right when I got on the Suns hype train, I was like, man, maybe that might be the team that could give Denver a run for the money. They go out and start losing and start playing the most, the worst basketball that, I, that I've seen lately. Um and then we got we got some good matchups that gonna happen. We're, I'm I'm interested in the fourth versus five matchup. We got Clippers versus the Dallas Mavericks, which is look like it's gonna be Doncic against the Kawhi team. He you know they he has a little vendetta against the way he drops 45 a game against them. Um, I'm really interested to see these playoff matchups come out play out. Are Philly gonna be the eight seed and they play Boston in the first round? Is Miami Heat gonna be the eight seed and play Boston in the first round? And we know how the history between those teams. That, you can throw the records out the window when those two teams play. It's all about will and, and who's going to get it done in that moment. And I'm, I'm damn, I'm damn excited for playoff basketball. I don't know about y'all guys, but I'll be tuned in. Rudy, you won't have to wake me up that night. I'll be up watching those games late night. So are we talking basketball or is this final? Final, final thoughts. thoughts. That was the final thoughts. Mm-hmm. You're ready to dive in, huh? You're... We're talking about basketball. I want to talk about real quick the the report that the Charlotte Hornets are interviewing Lindsey Harding, who is the G League coach for the Kings, the minor league team, the G League team, whatever the hell they call it. I am an old guy. I'm 46 years old. I come from a different generation. I don't think that men should coach women, and I don't think that women should coach children. That's how I feel. I think that there is a big problem where you skip over coaches who've been coaching in the NBA for 20 years as assistants, and don't get an interview. But because of some woke agenda that the NBA wants to put together to have women coaching in the NBA, you basically shit on people that have been doing it for a lot longer and are far more experienced than Paul. If she was to start off like Eric Spolster did as a video coordinator, the way people typically start off as coaches, that's one thing. I'm still not a complete. I'm not a proponent of women coaching men because I'm not a proponent of men coaching. I don't like that. I don't. I don't even know if there's any men coaching in the WNBA. Head coach. I don't know, but I, I don't think they should. I know initially there were. They should. I don't think they should. I think there's plenty of qualified women who can coach women's basketball. I think there's. I just. I don't. I don't. Believe, I think men's. I think locker rooms, male pro locker rooms are some of the most toxic environments that exist. Nick knows this. I've seen some of his videos from when he posts some of the stuff that you cannot do with females in a locker room. You would have a problem. And I think it creates an unnecessary discomfort. Now there could be some, there may be some players that are okay with it. I don't really think there will be that many though that would be okay with it because I don't think you can have a 5'8 female point guard Hello, six foot six point guard, five point guard. What it feels like to be guarded by a 230 pound man, or how it is to for a 6'11 power forward or center to box out another seven footer who's 270 pounds. It's basketball is the same, but it's different. The games are different. We've clearly shown that there's a difference in the way the games are. The men's game is played above the rim. X's and O's are great. X's and O's, and I mean, we've seen. If, for Christ's sakes, we watched that game last night, Nick, with the Heat and the Hawks. 
So it was one on one, one on one, one on one, one on one. None of that. It was no. There's no X's and O's in basketball anymore. Unless you're the Warriors when you're running star round all the time. It, it. I don't think that you should be. I don't think that you should take jobs from guys that have been doing it for very long. If she wants to work from the ground up, great. But her first job was assistant coach for the Sacramento Kings. Her first coaching job. She never coached women. She didn't coach in college. And she skipped the line to become an assistant coach. How does that happen? It's because the NBA is pushing this hard. And I don't know that they actually talk to their actual players. But the players are probably too afraid to say, I don't want that. We're the G League guys. The G League guys can't say anything. They can't say anything. They're the minor leagues. Like, we do what we're told. But guys making $50, $60 million, they dictate them. We know this. Coaches get fired every day because a player doesn't like it. We know why Adrian Griffin got fired. It was probably because Giannis didn't like it. He had a problem. And they're doing it in football, too. There's no, I asked you the other day, Nick, could I coach you at cornerback? The answer is hell no. And I know football. I coached football. But I never played cornerback. So I could tell you what I think you're supposed to do because I've watched enough film on it. But I couldn't show you. I couldn't ever put myself in your position to know what it feels like to have the fastest dude in front of you guarding that, covering that guy. Could I? No. And I don't think a corner can coach a defensive end on how to be a better defensive end. You'd be surprised it happens. Yeah, those teams probably suck. <laughs> um, if you have a corner coaching a defensive end, I think that team probably is terrible. Probably usually linebackers are some shit. <laughs> but, and then the, the comeback was that, you know, and I think that, I think playing at some level, college in a book, at least at a collegiate level, to be a professional coach in that sport is a, is a necessity. I know there was at least one coach that didn't. That was Todd Haley. His dad was like in charge. He was working for the Jets at the time, and he grew up in football, played little league football, didn't play beyond that. And his career as a coach, he, I mean, he, he, but he came from the bottom. He didn't get, oh, you're an assistant coach now. So, and that's a, the one exception. Mike McDaniel played at Yale. He played football in college. Like, he did play football. People think he was a, he's a big old dork, but he played ball. So, I can't coach in the NFL. I didn't play college football. I can't coach at NBA players. I didn't play in college basketball. And I just think that we've turned this thing into a situation where we're trying so hard to appease this idea of everything's inclusive. No, it's not. I can't go work at Hooters. I know that sounds stupid. I'm not going to be, go be a Victoria's Secret model. Have a whole bunch of men take all the Victoria's Secret model jobs and see how the women feel about it. They won't like it too much. I think we have to, it just, we have to, everything is not inclusive. Mm-hmm. I don't pledge, I'm a, I'm a member of Phi Beta Sigma. We don't pledge women. <laughs> and Zeta's, Zeta Phi Beta, AKA, all the females, they don't pledge men. Mm-hmm. There are things that are for men and there are things that are for women. What is the fucking problem? Why are we gone in such a fucking direction where we have to make everything everybody? No, we don't. There are things that are for men, things that are for women, things that are for kids. I can't go on the kiddie slide at the damn fair. Too big. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think that this thing where we're pushing it, and, you know, let alone put her. Are you going to hire a, a a young, inexperienced female coach to go coach a bunch of young kids with the Charlotte Hornets who were terrible? Can you imagine the clusterfuck disaster that would be? You'd actually have a better chance with a female coming to coach a good team than a bad team. Because those are more mature players typically and not a bunch of babies to our bunch of babies. That said, I just think they should men coach men, women coach women. I'm sure I'll get crucified for this. I don't care. Deal with it. You've done it again, Rudy. Whatever. You've done it again. Give me, give me 800,000 views and I'll be happy. You've done it again. But no, I, I, I agree with you. I have, you break it down like that. I don't, if you're going to have men and men do, you know, men coach men, women coach women, I'm all for it. There's enough qualified people on both sides of the spectrum to do, to do it now. Before, it wasn't. So that's why men coach women's basketball. Exactly. But now, that's you're right. but exactly. now things have changed. Now we could split it. And it shouldn't be a problem with doing it because there's more than enough jobs on the women's side. There's more than enough jobs on the men's side. We know why. 
We know why Lindsey Harding would want that interview. She'll make $3 million coaching men. She'll make fifty grand coaching women. 100%. I'll take it too. I don't blame her. I don't blame her, but you just blame fit, her. you just fitting out what's what's real and what's yeah, you know. I don't blame her. I blame the freaking leagues for kowtowing to this freaking this she, new. She everything won't get the job. It might it just might look good to do it, but one day it's gonna happen. One day it will happen, and the day it happens, and the day it happens, you cannot go back, man. So if you really want men to coach you, you guys better start opening your mouths because the day it happens, within fifteen years of that day. Half the league will be. It's gonna be. Coaches. It's gonna be like the black coaches in the NFL. Oh, we don't have enough women coaches. Think about how many black male coaches get overlooked in professional yeah. sports, and now they got to deal with worrying about females who have not had the experience and the work that they've yeah. done over the course. Of yeah, years. that's the difference between the. Now you're jumping over these guys. That's too. the difference between the black men and the women, and you know, in this argument because the black men were, they most of them played in the league, they had the experience, All they just weren't getting the job. League. So this one is just it's. There are things that are different and should be kept different. And we have to accept that. Just like double standards, we have to accept that. We already talked about that before. I can go back to when I was covering and, and writing. There was a time, I don't even remember Donald, but there was a time when uh, women couldn't go in male locker rooms mm -hmm. after a game. Fighters. Yeah. There was a time. And there was a big fight about it. And eventually the league's all freaking bent over and said, oh, it's okay. Well, how do you feel as a man when you're walking around butt-ass mm -hmm. naked and this woman reporter is walking around like, like there's certain levels of discomfort now because I've been in male locker rooms and dudes walk around Nick. I mean, Nick, I'm sure you have been in hurricane locker rooms. I'm like, hey, you got a damn towel, bro. <laughs> Please. But, but they don't let men in women locker rooms. Why not? Why not? They still to this day do not let men into women's locker rooms, but they let women into men's locker rooms. Yeah. Why is that happening? Because there's double standards. And I, I can promise you that the men going into a WNBA locker room are not going to be. <laughs> All right, we're done. We're done. Here. We're done here. I'm wrapping it up the show today. All right. On that note, um, we want to. No, oh, no, no. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So yes, on that note, as we wrap up the closing section, I want to uh, give the viewers and my uh, my co-creators of the show uh, a quick announcement. Starting next week, I'm going to be starting a new segment at the end of the show called Reflections with Don. Reflections is going to be my three to five minute rant, um, basically discussing the things that I don't agree with that were said during the show. Uh, <laughs> my co-creator, Nick, uh, hit me on a chat and was like, hey, man, I've been getting some feedback that people want to hear you. I was like, well, you know, yeah. that's not what I'm here for. I'm trying to be Molly. I'm trying to be the male Molly. But then there's some times where I'm just listening and I'm just like, holy <laughs> shit. This is, I just, this is wow. This is just wow. So today was one of those moments where I like clenched, clenched my pearls a few times. Like, holy hard, fuck. Hard like hard tits. Wow. Like, I don't agree with that. So starting next week is going to be reflection. Reflections at the end of the episode. It's probably going to before, come before the closing moments. And it's just going to be, you know, your viewers and listeners time with Don. It's going to be your time with me. You may not agree. Some of you guys actually love the things that, that Rudy says, which are, are shocking. Some of you agree with the things that Nick says that are also terrifying. Some of you guys, you agree with me. But I think that's what keeps us colorful. That's what keeps us entertaining. And, um, you know, we're pushing a couple million views, guys, on, on all of our platforms. And we want to thank you for that. And we're going to keep getting better. We're going to keep getting sharper. Please give your feedback. Please send more messages to Nick about what we can or can't be doing. Please send more messages to Nick saying how much you hate Rudy. He loves it. And um, we're going to continue to build this show and have more parts of America disliking Rudy because there are small pockets of the country who d d strongly, strongly <laughs> dislike Rudy. So that being said, I want to uh, thank you guys for tuning in for this episode. Of course, he has one more thing to say. Of course. Of course. <laughs> There's also segments that love me because that rant on Kim Mulkey got over 15,000 likes. Just so you know, 15,000 likes. One lines. thing that hurt my feelings. Yeah. I'm call it Angel oh. Reed. So where's my? I need someone. To, I need to wipe my tears, Nick. Um, you know, like like Flage Johnson did. My beard is on point, <laughs> motherfuckers. So 
Don't you fucking dare tell me that my beard is fake. Oh. I don't have any fucking Beijing in my beard. Oh my Just because you can't grow a beard, you bitch ass pussies. Oh. Oh. My beard is real. It's lined up perfectly almost all the time. <laughs> yes, at times. Do I add some dye because I get a few grays? My beard is naturally red. It is dark red. It is not fake. There's no Beijing. So when you say my beard don't look right or it's fake, you can suck my dick. That is not true. That hurt my feelings. And you made me want to cry a little bit. I even cried to my wife about that. That's not very nice. I have no problem overall with response. I, as you know, I will communicate back and forth with the poster. But when you fucking, when you come back and your response is to call me bald and fat, You've already shown that you lost. You lost. Because if your first response is you're fat and bald, I beat your ass. You suck. Boom. Roasted. Uh, Yeah, we'll be off the air. (laughs) For what? My beard is on point. I've I've had men come up to me at restaurants. You just told these people to suck your pinga. Suck a nut. I can bleed it. I can bleep it out. Okay. <laughs> Donald. Yeah, with that being said, let's no, let's hurry up and get off. Let's hurry up and get off now before shit goes left. Come and on it's now, already pod, gone Come on now, podcast, IG, Facebook, and uh, TikTok. Come on now, pod, Twitter. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, you. hold on. Before we go, before quick shout out to Pac Man Jones. This weekend, I was there at the Evermore Resort in Orlando. He was actually our neighbor. Bought us some shots. Cool dude. Actually, looks like he can still play right now. It was my invitation. Super random. It wasn't on? my invite to give. <laughs> so sorry. So sorry. But um, actually, we should tape an episode there. It's fucking amazing. Um, yeah. So shout out to Pac Man Jones for the shots, and um, he's a hilarious guy. We need to get him on the show. So, being guys, great. Tune in next week. We love you guys. Be good. Wow. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.